So today's that day where we go back and we look at everything else that we've done so far in this unit, uh, learning all about fractions, and it's really going to make everything stick so it's there for the long term. Uh, so that's really good. Um, I've been flooded in the last three, four days uh, with loads of just amazing examples of the ways you've taken the tasks and different solutions that we'll have a look at, which will be really good. So there's been so many creative ways that you've kind of gone about those things. Uh, let's go back and let's have a look at everything that we've done. So to start off with today, I want us all to find different fractions of amounts and see how we can then extend that thinking to find lots of other possibilities as well. That flexible thought. So two thirds of 18, what I'd always look to do there, let's shift it up, is get 18 and split it into thirds there so we can see that a third of 18 is 6 so 2 thirds of 18 um, will be 12 now let's think about other related facts so I'm going to move those counters away um, and let's think in, instead of let's go for 2 thirds of 180 and, and how will that compare well if we just move this board up well it'll be just the same except this time it'll be uh, multiples of 10 so it'll be 60 120 there now there's lots of other related facts that i could i could derive from that as well so let's say we put those two together and we were asking for two thirds of 198 then i just need to combine these facts here so two thirds of 18 that's a part of 198 and two thirds of 180 put those two together and i will have 132 um, and let's say a few other little variations we could have on that as well let's say we go from two-thirds of 180 maybe we have a go for two-thirds of 183 well what's the difference it's three more so I just need to do two-thirds of that three and add it onto this so that would equal 122 um, and let's see if we can uh, if we can have one more let's go for two sixths of 180 now how will that differ well that will be like this image except rather than splitting into thirds i'll go into sixths and so what will be different rather than the answer and um, being 120 it will be half of that and it would be uh it would be 60 can you see there one sixth two sixths let's have a look at another example shall we um, so using a bar model, if I was doing 3 eighths of 32, maybe we get 32, and that's really the information that's in the question. I haven't done any calculation yet, but I've got the whole is 32, it's in eighths, I'm after 3 eighths of it. So the first thing I need to do is think, well, what's 1 eighth? So 32 divided into 8 pieces, pieces of 4. And then I can see by looking at my image, well then 3 eighths of 32, well that is going to be... 12 it is three of them there now let's say if i'm going for a related calculation it might be well what about three quarters of 32 well rather than it being in eight pieces you can see that each piece is almost doubled here so it would be eight 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 and eight now of course what we'll find is that the answer goes from being 12 to double 12 which is 24. Um, now lots of little variations on that so say we, we found that three quarters of 32 equals 24 then it could be that we go for three quarters of excuse my writing there 320 equals 240 um, and then let's say from there we could go well what about three fortieths of 320 well that will be back to being 24 with the powers of 10 so lots of just different related facts that we can find if i know i can work out another now your challenge is as follows um, i'm going to give you three calculations to have a go at and they are here um, so one level see if you can if you can answer them and then the second level is see if you can find related facts that stem from them so if i know so so we're after four sevenths of 21 a third of 75 and two fifths of 40. So if you know that, what other related calculations can you come up with? It's not an 11, it's a pause sign. Pause the video and have a go. Okay, and then whenever you're ready, let's have a look. So for four sevenths of 21, well, of course, the first thing I would do is split 21 into seven pieces, that's three. 
and then so if I've got four of them I'm gonna have 12 here so a third of 75 and that means 75 divided by 3 um, now I would probably rather than thinking how many threes and 75 there if you know um, we can add in steps of 25 and three of those steps of 25 get us to 75 and so two fifths of 40 well I've got to split 40 into five equal pieces how many fives in 40 it's eight um, so two lots of eight is 16 and let's see if we can come up with a few different related facts for, e for either of those examples so let's say four sevenths of 21 equals 12 um, so what will two sevenths be um, two sevenths of 21 well that is going to be half it's going to be six and let's go from that one how about we go for uh, two seventieths of 21 and that's going to be 0.6 um, let's go from two fifths of 40 equals 16 um, so maybe we could go there for four fifths of 40 um, you notice that what's happened the numerator has doubled um, so rather than 16 it's going to be 32 there um, and let's see if we can go for another one so let's go for uh, two fifths of 400 equals 160 of course very many possibilities that you could have come up with here um, a third of 75 equals 25 so of course uh, let's go for two thirds of 75 um, and that is going to be 50 um, now what about this one I always like this one two thirds of 78 um, well I've got three more and I've got to get two thirds of that extra three um, so that one 52 loads of other possibilities I would love to see what you came out with and I hope you, that's got you warm for the main part of today's video so here we go we're setting off on our guided tour of the last two weeks of our fractions unit we're going to cover babies books butterflies and so much more uh, we started off by looking at examples of where we would need fractions and we said for example if we were giving the age of a toddler we might end up using fractions because it's not adequate just to say that they're one or they're two because we want to describe in more detail than that whereas I have to say my age I generally just give it in whole years now um, and then we looked at some other examples when would we use fractions we're likely to if we're sharing pizza because pizzas are relatively large and so describing them just the amount I have in ones isn't accurate enough um, we wouldn't want to use fractions with something that we can't cut up. It could be that if we're sharing 46 raisins, we use fractions and we split the one remaining remaining fraction by three people, but we probably wouldn't. Um, but I reckon I would likely describe the amount that I sleep in a night in a fraction. Um, so some contexts we do, in some contexts we don't use fractions. Uh, and then we had a look at some other real world examples and we compared a part to a whole and we were saying when we're looking at a fraction we're not just looking at the size of something but it's the comparison of the size of the part to the size of its whole and how can a butterfly um, a part of a butter a fraction of a butterfly be larger than a fraction of an elephant well of course an elephant is larger so a trunk of an elephant is a smaller fraction of an elephant than the wings of a butterfly or are of a butterfly because the butterfly itself of course is smaller uh, and then that uh, will lead into today's question. Now, if you know me, and I think you're starting to, you'll know two things. One is I'm always trying to get Venn diagrams in things. And the other is I'm always trying to get capybaras in things. Capybaras, the world's largest rodent. Uh, anyway, have a go at these ones. Um, which one do you think is larger? Which one's smaller? A foot as a fraction of a capybara. A wheel as a fraction of a bike. And an hour as a fraction of a day. Pause the video and have a go. Right, and let's have a little look. Um, well, there's one that I can work out absolutely f for sure, the fraction, which of course is an hour as a fraction of a day, because one hour is one twenty-fourth of a day. Um, so then I guess, let's see if we can compare the others to that. A wheel as a fraction of a bike, well, it's a lot less than half of a bike, but I think it's certainly more than one out of 24 pieces. If I had 24 wheels, I think that'd be more than a bike. Now this is a difficult one, but what about a little a foot here as a fraction of a capybara? I think if I had 24 feet, then it would still not quite fill this capybara. Um, so I would say that the smallest fraction is a foot as a, capy, a fraction of a capybara, then an hour as a fraction of a day, then a wheel as a fraction of a bike.
Um, and then that can help us when we're looking at, uh, at examples like this. So what fraction of this shape is orange? Uh, pause the video, see if you can figure that. So let's have a look. Um, we've got to look at this shape and of course I've got to think well how many equal parts would fit in this hole um, and so I'm going to have to break the shape up to to do that and I imagine breaking it into eight pieces. One, two, draw an imaginary line there, three, four and then this half also into uh, four pieces. So in total how many pieces have I got? I've got eight pieces and I've got four on this side, one more there, I've got five eighths of this shape. Um, now it can also help us when we're thinking about parts and holes to be able to um, to work out uh, or estimate a fraction. So it's, it's probably not possible for you to work out the exact fraction here that, of the rectangle that's blue, but see if you can come up with an estimate. Um, pause the video and have a go at that. And um, so the kind of thinking you'll go through is, well, about how many of these blue parts will fit in this hole. Um, it can be helpful to see if I just move that part and put it there, and actually there, I can split this shape into six equal pieces. It's a, it is actually a sixth the way that it's been measured. Um, we also had a look at fraction and decimal equivalents. So we've got some examples here. Um, and to show that when we have decimals, we count up in steps of 0 0.1 uh, going up. So 10 steps, we have a base 10 number system. And explaining this idea that fractions, if we count up in tenths, that's the same. But actually, if we count up in quarters, each quarter is, is bigger than a 0 0.1 and so on. So, so a quarter, for example, isn't 0 0.4. And seeing, I can see that a quarter falls exactly halfway between 0 0.2 and 0 0.3, 0 0.25. And then seeing that a fifth is the same as, as two steps of tenths. Um, so 0 0.2 is the same as a fifth. Um, then we've got two fifths is the same as 0 0.4 and so on. Um, and then we came to comparing fractions and we used different strategies for comparing fractions like thinking more or less than half. Um, we looked at improper fractions, we thought about well what if the denominator is the same or the numerator and I had this fabulous example sent through from Kitty so uh, pause the video see how you get on which fraction in each pair is larger and rank them by difficulty in doing so. Okay and, and let's have a little look at them when you're ready. So I love these examples. Um, now this one I found was, I can't just compare them directly because the denominator is not the same, but it's relatively easier to get them in the same denominator because if I just um, double the three and double the eight, I'll have an equivalent fraction, um, which is six sixteenths. So that will be more than four sixteenths there. Um, I also could think, well, four sixteenths a quarter and three eighths is, is more than a quarter. Um, the, uh, then when I was looking at some of the other fractions, I actually looked at these. Well, they, they've got the same numerator. The denominator in thirteenths is smaller, um, so six elevenths must be more. And equally, more than half and less than half. If I compare the denominators, and, uh, the denominators and the numerators. Um, now there's a little cheeky one here, because actually if I have five ninths or twenty out of thirty-six, well, if I make this fraction out of thirty-six, I need to multiply it by 4, the numerator and the denominator, to make that equivalent fraction. It is 20 36 as well. I find the, these kind of examples the hardest, and I love this one, um, because this one is 2 twelfths away from 1, and this fraction here is 2 elevenths away from 1. Now, twelfths are smaller than elevenths, um, so 10 twelfths will be closer to being 1 than 9 elevenths. Um, and again, we finished recently by looking at, as we practiced at the beginning, fractions of amounts and just loved these examples here for different reasons, really. Um, so Molly and her drawing, can we see here that the, the question that we had was two out of some, uh, of some denominator of some number equals 32. And Molly's drawing shows these two parts are 32. So each part is 16. And so she thought, well, let's say there were four parts, then the number would have to be 64. Brilliant diagram for building understanding. And we've had all kinds of different answers coming through for this question. These are just a small number of the examples that we have. Some really ambitious examples here as well of how that can be done. So again, huge well done to everyone for sending them through. So here we are, that blue link underneath the video. Um, we've got a task A and a task B. Um, a different range of questions around fractions. So uh, the fraction of those shapes, um, the correct fraction and decimal conversions. Can you explain any of the mistakes that have been made as well in the person's thinking? Why might they think it's that? 
Um, then we have circle fractions that are more than one and less than two. So have a think, what makes a fraction more or less than one? Um, now I'll give you an example of a fraction that is two. Um, four halves is two. So have a think of, of these fractions here. Um, which ones are more than one and less than two? Uh, task B, again, fraction of a shape here. Um, part B, how many fractions can be made that are more than 0.5 and less than 0.8 using these numbers as the numerator or the denominator? Um, now, part C is a question that's been sent in. Love this one. Can you find different possible answers? This one is a 46, just to be really super clear on that. Answers are at the bottom. Enjoy. Everyone, it's been fantastic having you joining in. You're doing a really good thing. Hopefully you're getting a lot from it. You find it really enjoyable. Um, we're going to have a bit of a change of gear because we're going to move into an emphasis around problem solving in lots of different areas. So lots of rich problems, lots of thinking. We're going to unpack that back on Monday. See you then.